All right, guys, let's talk about chapter 15 here, the heart, and we're going to talk about chapter 16, vascular. Very quickly, 20-minute recap of the big highlight stuff, okay? So, uh, let's see. So, we'll starting off chapter 15, 296 in your book, and this is what we call, this is what I call unit 6, okay? Unit 6 is all cardiovascular. So, with that, let's just dive right into it, okay? So we're skipping past the heart structures of the heart wall, the base. I'm assuming you know that. So I want to talk about this picture here. This is pictured on 297 in your book. Again, this has got a lot of information, but take the images I've posted for you, that sort of stuff, and make sure that you kind of, you know, you get this out of here, okay? Or you get, you can take some of this wording off so that you have just the heart and practice labeling this, practice running blood flu, blood uh, through for, for that sort of thing. So again, as a refresher, what we've already learned, or maybe you haven't heard this yet, but we've got the rule of four, okay? So we've got four chambers, right atrium, right ventricle, or, yep, like, again, drawing, like, this line through everything. It's not the best line, but right atrium, left atrium. We've got the top portion, superior portion of the heart is, again, atrium, bottom down here. We're talking about our ventricles broken up into right and left. And again, the right and left is dictated by the patient's right and left. Not yours when you're looking at them, but the patient's. That's always, if we go back to chapter one, anatomical terms, that's how it always is, right? So those are four chambers. What were our other four? Four valves, okay? We've got two big valves that, that are the gatekeepers here, okay, in between the right atrium and the left uh, right ventricle and the left atrium and the left ventricle. We got to have again valves. You think backflow. You always think they're preventing black flow. Black backflow. Woo. Sorry, been a long day with the kids. My words are <laughs> a little bit off. So again, preventing backflow is the job of the valves. So valves allow the blood to go through, and they are open and closed versus on pressure. So when pressure this fills up and this is ejected, now this is somewhat empty. Pressure is higher here. It forces this tricuspid valve open. The blood drops in and starts filling the ventricle up. When that happens, this snaps close. This fills up. Boom. Big contraction happens. And that ejects the blood up the pulmonary artery. And then this process kind of rinses and repeat. We're going to look at some videos for that. Okay. Remember, four chambers, four valves. The other two valves, pulmonary valve in the pulmonary artery. That's pretty easy. And the aortic valve in the aorta on the way valve. Again, preventing backflow. Once blood passes through here, the pressure changes in between all the chambers. The valves snap closed, prevent the blood from dropping back down, and get it on its merry way. The last four is the four great vessels, which can be broken down into some subcategories. But mainly, the first one is your biggest vein we have. It's returning all the blood from the body to the right atrium. It's the guy in blue here. That is your vena cava, vena cava, however you want to say it, okay? This guy, vena cava, blood is flowing back all into here, into, it's a bad arrow, into my right atrium. So we got the vena cava or vena cava, one great vessel. Second great vessel, pulmonary artery here. Breaks into a left and right, but this whole structure right here, pulmonary artery. Third great vessel is when the blood's coming back from the pulmonary, from the lungs. I have a left and a right pulmonary veins blood oxygenated blood returning to the from the lungs into the left side of the heart in the left atrium gets down into the left ventricle boom ejected into the aorta our final great vessel of the four great vessels so again four chambers four valves four great vessels and you got to remember you think like blood flow through the heart that's your key to this right now, if you imagine that your little red blood cell coming back from tissue needing oxygen, you travel into the right atrium through the tricuspid valve. Tricuspid because it has three cuspids, three leaflets that close and open into right ventricle, ejected through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery, go to the lungs, come back through a left and right pulmonary vein. Veins always, remember, remember this too, Arteries, A for arteries, are always away from the heart. Veins are always, always towards the heart. So artery away, veins towards the heart. So pulmonary artery still has deoxygenated or oxygen-poor blood going to the lungs to get their oxygen. They come back, 
Now that blood is very auction and rich, very oxygenated. It's coming back in a vein, though, returning to the heart in the left atrium, or yes, left atrium through the mitral valve or bicuspid valve because it has two leaflets into the left ventricle, and then boom, ejected through the aortic valve into the aorta and then all across the body, up to the brain, up to the arms, down through the abdomen, to the legs, does its tissue, drops off his oxygen, and then rinse and repeat. You got to know that forwards and backwards. Again, it's only one way. That's why we have our backflow valves, four of them, and the heart, but that's it's a one-way ticket through there. So that is the big stuff for the structure of heart. You've got to, got to, got to know, okay? And then the rest will kind of go fast through this stuff, right? So we're going to kind of skip the questions. We'll save the questions for in class. And one thing, again, with the heart valves, this is a top-down picture. The heart valves, again, okay? Got to, got to remember that the heart valves are what make the sound. So we have, for heart sounds, when you're talking about it, it's in S1 and S2, right? S1, S2, that's the sounds. That's the lub, dub. That's how it's said, lub, dub. Put in parentheses, lub, dub. S1, S2. The lub dub sound is these valves opening and closing like they're air. Basically, the pressure changes causes these valves are closed, right? While the atria are filling the ventricles. Boom. Ventricles are full. They pump. They change pressure. Open these valves and our tricuspid and mitral valve close to keep blood um, from flowing straight through the atria into the ventricle while the ventricle contracts and shoots blood through here. That's the S1, S2, the dum 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 the lub dub, okay? So the closing of the valves, closing of the valves, not opening though, specifically the closing, that loved up, that's what makes heart sounds. This We're going to skip through this again. Stay with me. This is our quick roundup. Okay. Again, blood flow through the heart. Got to, got to know it. This is page 300 and 301. This is your bread and butter. We're just going to kind of keep skipping. This is a good video. You may not be able to hear the audio. Okay, I'm actually going to pause the audio because this is a quick kind of run through video. But you can see here, right? This is what I'm talking about. This love dub, like love dub, love dub, love dub. You see that? As the pressure changes, these valves opening, closing, opening, closing. So this is a good like little insight into the heart again. I like the big picture of it opening and closing at the back here. See? Boom, 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 boom. Our AV valves. Boom, doom, pulmonic and aortic valve. Boom, doom, boom, doom. Love dub, S1, S2. So coronary circulations, talked about page 302, I think. Yeah, 302 and 303. Quick recap with coronary circulation, okay? Coronary means, is the word for crown. Okay, that's meaning crown, meaning that it is the crown of the heart here, basically on top of the heart, that's supposed to be. When you hear coronary circulation or coronary arteries, coronary veins, you're talking about what is actually feeding the blood muscle and the blood tissue or the blood, the heart muscle and the heart tissue itself. Again, the heart is a giant muscle. It has to get nutrients, right? It has to get blood flow, a lot of it. So it has its own dedicated blood supply off of the aorta here into these coronary arteries. You don't have to know the names of the arteries. I just want you to know coronary arteries is its own blood flow because the tissue itself, the muscle of the heart, has to get some nutrients too, obviously, right? Um, it all flows back in veins too. So basically, aorta branches off into all these different coronary arteries, and then veins return from capillaries that we'll learn about. Veins always return to the heart. This coronary sinus, if you hear the word coronary sinus, it's talking about this big on the posterior portion of the heart, this big kind of cavity that catches a lot of the um, vein uh, return from the coronary, from the cardiac tissue. So that's coronary sinus. Make sure that you're reading over the section on P303, Life Lesson, okay? Talks about angina and myocardial infarction. Again, that's relating to a myocardial infarction is a heart attack. And that's talking about generally a heart attack is when the coronary artery, right, for example, gets blocked, okay? Um, gets blocked here. Say this gets blocked somewhere down the path, okay? So, okay, it's blocked here. Now blood flow can't get to here, right, at all. So this tissue starts to die off because it becomes ischemic, getting no oxygen, getting no nutrients, causes the chest pain, causes the referred pain down the arm and the jaw and all that, and that's a heart attack. They have to manually go in with a stent, open this artery up, 
or do what they call coronary artery bypass, get a vein or something and, and build an artery around it, this blockage, or clear the blockage out. There's a lot of different ways, but that is an MI. Whenever we have cardiac tissue ischemia or cell target cardiac tissue death, that's what we're talking about. Or that's the term myocardial, right? Because remember the middle layer, myocardium is the muscle layer of the heart. Myocardial infarct, infarction is meaning cell death or, or tissue death, tissue injury, okay? So read up on that part. Make sure you got an understanding of what a myocardial infarction is, aka heart attack, right? So going through this quick. Again, kind of going through everything. I want to make sure you understand page 306. Cardiac conduction is good. We'll talk about that in class. Well, I do want to talk about page 306. Okay. There it is. Cardiac output. So cardiac output is your number of times the heart beats in a minute. So your heart rate multiplied by the stroke volume, which is the amount of blood ejected by the heart with each beat. Okay. Because you have to think that each ventricle will fill up with a certain amount of blood, but it, it all will not get ejected. Sometimes there's a little bit of residual left and we'll talk about that, but there's a certain amount of milliliters that gets ejected for every amount that fills up each ventricle. And that's what we're talking about with stroke volume. Okay. And then obviously, right. If you look at this cardiac output formula, say for some reason you have over active sympathetic nervous system or something, something's going on, right. Stress, uh, adrenal cortex, adrenal medulla tumor. I mean, you can name a bunch of random stuff, right. But let's say our heart rate goes up, right but that our number, our supply of blood that fills up the ventricles or stroke volume and gets ejected doesn't change, okay? Well, this is gonna kind of mess with the cardiac output. Same thing if we have a low heart rate, right? Our heart rate's like 50 or something like that. When you have the same amount of stroke volume, right? It's gonna be causing our cardiac output to decrease or have issues. If you imagine less stroke volume, be like, I'm bleeding or I'm anemic. Same heart rate, but now my heart rate might increase because this is decreased to try and homeostasis balance this out. That's what they're trying to get at with cardiac output, okay? So cardiac output, heart rate times stroke volume. And you need to make sure you kind of have an idea of what a normal heart rate is. It's taught, discussed a little bit there on page 308. But for reference point, a normal heart rate is 60 beats per minute to 100 beats per minute, typically. And there are some that say 90 is tachycardic. But the words for that at the bottom of 308 is if it's under 60 beats per minute, it is Brady, it's slow, bradycardia, okay, tachycardia, tachy is wacky, is elevated heart rate. So Brady is slow, tachycardia, tachy is fast, fast heart rate, over 100, okay? Um, last big section from chapter 15 talks about left and right sided heart failure. Okay. I want to touch on this kind of refresh. So big thing with left ventricular failure, left sided heart failure and right side heart failures. You think plumbing, remember our heart is like a closed system loop all the way around the body, right? The big thing for that is that what our body is wanting to do is keep that flow going. It's like a plumbing system. So if there's a problem, stuff backflows, and then that's what causes the symptoms for a patient. Okay. For example, that's why they're showing this guy coughing because he has fluid in his lungs. Why? Because he has left side. So left side, right? Left side, correct, is the side of our heart that pumps to the body, it pumps out to the body, right? Well, if something, this doesn't work as well, now everything slows down and now blood backflows where it came from. Where did it come from? The lungs. So now blood backflows and it pools in the lungs and causes fluid to leak out, causes pulmonary edema. So fluid on the lungs coughing, shortness of breath, weakness, think lung stuff, okay? Fluid in the lungs, that's left-sided heart failure. The other side is the right side. So right-sided heart failure, again, think plumbing. Where does it back up? So all the blood pouring into the right atrium and pouring into the right ventricle is coming from the body, right? So if there's a, an issue where my heart doesn't pump as well on the right side, okay, that's going to back up to my systemic circulation, all of my outside the heart outside my body so that's why this person has swelling of their abdomen swelling of their legs generalized swelling and edema their liver gets enlarged from overload fluid okay 
Jugular vein distension means there's just excess fluid. So you think excess fluid in all the circulation behind, outside my heart. So edema, that's kind of things, okay? So you make sure and think that sort of thing. So we're going to skip through our questions. Again, we'll do this as much of these in class as we can. So blood vessels. So again, this is chapter 16, the second half of unit six. Big thing. Again, we've already talked about it. Arteries always, 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 always carry away, carry blood away from the heart. Whether we're talking about the weirdness with the portal systems we'll talk about, or we're talking about the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein being opposite as far as oxygenation versus um, oxygen poor blood. Doesn't matter. They're still always arteries away, veins return, and capillaries is the connection point. The connection, see capillaries, see connection, connect with the C. Capillaries are the connection point of the smallest arteries and veins where everything gets so tiny and where the actual nutrient exchange happens is inner capillaries. And that is the connection point, and they are the smallest. Okay. So C um, for um, capillaries, A for arteries away. Okay. Blood vessel layers, there's three layers. You're just going to have to memorize them tunica, intima. So intimate is like close to somebody. I'm intimate with somebody. I'm close with them, hugging, whatever. Okay. Tunica, intima is close inside layer. Tunica, media, M for media, M for muscle, because this layer is a smooth muscle. And media M for middle. Tunica media is middle. Tunica externa, again, we think about external is outside. So tunica externa is the outside layer. There's also, this is on page 318 in your book, and you want to make sure that you understand what an aneurysm is. That's discussed in the life lesson section down there. Okay, but basically an aneurysm, if you imagine that this is an artery pictured here, again, these layers are the same for arteries and veins, just in arteries, they tend to be a little bit thicker, larger, and they have more smooth muscle than veins, but the same exact naming for the layers between arteries and veins, okay, don't get that confused, they're just, veins are just a little bit thinner and not as muscular, they don't have as much smooth muscle as arteries do, but... An aneurysm is basically like a weakening of the vessel wall. This is a thin layer. Maybe the muscle layer gets weakened. This ball weakens, and then the whole lining, because the outside layer is thin, kind of swells up like a balloon. That's a weird balloon that's been stretched on one side, and so as the balloon deteriorates, it kind of blebs out like this, like a big bleb. That is called an that is what an aneurysm is. And so this weakened wall lets the blood flow push out like this, and it doesn't burst necessarily, but it could start to hemorrhage and bleed and slow leak, or it could rupture entirely. And that's an artery, which is high pressure. Arteries are high pressure. Veins are low pressure. Okay. So arteries come are closer to the heart means they're pushing high pressure. They're going to push out and bleed. And that could cause a broken artery like this or an aortic aneurysm like this could cause death. If this happens in the brain or the uh, aorta around the heart, or the aorta in the abdominal area, big big vessels, big arteries. This could cause major bleeding. This could definitely cause death. So that's make sure you know what an aneurysm is. Okay. <clears throat> so again, capillaries, capillary beds are where the artery and veins meet, and that's where the exchange happens. You know, two way exchange of getting rid of oxygen and stuff, so the tissue can use it, and picking up waste products, carbon dioxide, that sort of stuff. Okay. Oh, this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about pulmonary circulation. This is talked about circulatory routes on page 324. Again, it uses the words too on page 325 that systemic circulation is general circulation. So real quick, let's talk about portal systems. So the blood flow to the heart, or excuse me, to the lungs, and on page 328, Talks about the hepatic, hepatic being liver, portal system. Okay, what a portal system is, is that, okay, what is happening when the blood leaves the right side of the heart and goes to the lungs? This is a portal system, meaning that blood is not give the lung tissue any nutrients at all. When this blood goes, this oxygen poor blood goes to the lungs, it's only going there for the O2 CO2 exchange. That's all it's going for. The blood, the lung tissue itself doesn't get any value from that stuff, right? It can't get value from deoxygenated blood. The lung tissue, just like everything else, other tissue in our body needs oxygen 
and nutrients. It's not getting that from this. All it's doing is being a housing, being in a place that this exchange can happen. And that's why it's called like a portal system. It portals the blood to a specific area for a job to happen. But that tissue that that area that the job happens in doesn't gain any benefit. So looking at, okay, um, also note that if I asked you one big artery that you should know, if you took CPR, you know, it's carotid artery in the neck, either side, left and right. That's how you would check someone's pulse. Real quick, let's talk about um, hepatic portal system, okay? Page 329. Hepatic portal system, again, what happens here is that the blood flow, basically, as the veins collect all this blood from our GI tract, from our stomach and all our small intestines and large intestines, right? It's full of nutrients, right? Full of nutrients from all the food we've eaten. Well, we need to filter out the nutrients and shove them where they need to go, whether that's storing glucose or we need to filter out toxins like the medicine we took or the alcohol we drink or anything you can think of in that regard, okay? Our liver's got to filter it out. It's got to see all that stuff. And so if the filter, the liver's trying to get rid of toxins and the liver's trying to help distribute all the nutrients and stuff we got from there. So instead of all these veins just dumping straight back into the vena cava and then going to the heart for blood flow, they do a detour. So all the veins do a portal, they portal away. So instead of going straight to the vena cava, they go to the liver, okay? But again, this is deoxygenated, oxygen-poor blood, nutrient-rich, but oxygen-poor coming from our GI tract. It does not benefit the actual liver tissue, just like the same kind of thing with our lung, our pulmonary circulation does not benefit the actual pulmonary tissue, okay? This blood is nutrient-rich, oxygen-poor, leaves all our GI tract, goes to the liver to get filtered out, store glucose, whatever, and then once it passes through the liver, gives no vet benefit to the liver cells and the liver tissue itself, okay? dumps back into the vena cava, then goes back into circulation, okay? So make sure you know that. That's your big thing from all the stuff. And then also, just as a side note, you want to make sure that you understand um, a normal range for blood pressure. Again, just general, if I ask you about blood pressure, you have to think that it's going to be pretty obvious if I'm asking you about a blood pressure that's too high, like 160 over 90. So look at that. Um, discuss his blood pressure and how that works. Um, both on page 330 and 331, the life lesson section. And then kind of the last little bit is atherosclerosis on page 334. Atherosclerosis is important. That talks about buildup of cholesterol, fatty streaks, and plaques in blood vessels and makes them clot off. That's what happens in a heart attack. So make sure you know that. Um, otherwise, that's, a, that's your 20-minute summary of the cardiac and vascular system. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon. God bless.